In this video, we're going to focus on creating a marker here, including text. So let's start look how to do this. So let's start look how to add markers with text on the line chart. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to have a marker here and then we want to put the text between there and we will make sure that the text will rotate nicely. You can see here, I use the boiler template and you can get this boiler template here on chartjs3.com getting started. And this link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, just copy this chunk of code. If you want the source code from this video or from many other videos, check out this Patreon page here where I have stored all my source codes of every video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and start to work on our border template. So we have here our basic line chart here. And what I want to do now is I want to create a nice plugin. And I'm going to type in here plugins. Put here, here a bracket because you could have more than one plugin. And I'm going to give this the name, the line marker text plugin. And I'm going to copy this. And then what I will do is just here between, I will create a new line marker text uh, plugin block. And then I'm going to say a constant line marker text equals, then I'm going to give it an ID. And the ID will be the same name, so it's easy. And then when do we want to draw? Do we want to draw it before we draw the lines or do we want to have it on top? In this case, because we're working with text, it probably be more practical to have it on top. So I'm going to say here, after the data sets has been drawn, I'm going to put in these items here, make sure you have a column here. And I'm going to say here, chart object. We're going to have here the arguments and the plugins, and then we're going to work here. Now, what I need is a constant for object destructuring. If you don't understand object destructuring, please check out in the description box the link Understanding Chart.js Object Destructuring. So now I want to have here the CTX. What I will need here is probably the chart area. And we can say here we need the top, bottom, or maybe the height could be as well. And then next we're going to say here the scales. And for the scales, we probably need the X scale. And there we are. So now we have this done. You can start to draw the line. So first thing I want to draw the line, I will do this very quickly. I have another video that explains it all extensively. I'm going to say your ctx.begin path. And in the begin path, because we want to create a new element or shape. Next, what I want to do is I want to give it a color. So I'm going to say ctx.stroke style i'm going to give this color oh let's grab a color here or let's make it gray light gray so it's nice and easy to spot light gray there we are next what i want to have here is the thickness of this line so i'm going to say here ctx dot line width and how many pixels do i want to have it in thickness let's say well three i think maybe even need 10 or 15 pixels but anyway let's do 10 so we have enough space for the text later on Next, what I want to do is I want to draw the line. So I'm going to say here, ctx.move to, and what I will do is this is the intent to draw. And the focus is on the intent. So it will not draw yet, but we'll say where exactly the line should be. So where does where do we want to have the line? Well, let's say we want to put it on Friday. I want to draw, start from here and go all down here. So I'm going to say here, you have the X and Y coordinates. But we know that the very top of the chart area, that's this here. So we can put that in here. So next, I need to have the index number, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So Friday is the fourth of the array, or so uh, index number five, uh, 4. So we're going to say here, we're going to use here a built-in function, which is get pixel for the value, and the value is the index number in this case, index number 4. The moment we have this, if we save, nothing happens because we have an intent to draw and uh, let's see here, it, it does give an error. So let's double check CTS, that is wrong. Make sure you have CTX because that stands for the context to draw the canvas. And there's another mistake, interesting. I didn't save this properly, sorry. There we are, now it works nicely. So make sure CTX. Next thing is I want to have the line going from Friday top all the way to Friday bottom. And that is of course just the same item because we have a straight line. So I will not adjust this part only down here and say instead of top, we have bottom. Once we did this, 
I want to say ctx.stroke to give the command to draw this shape. Save, refresh. Let me make sure. Save. And, oh, of course. My bad. I have your move tool. That's not allowed. I need to say here line tool. And the reason why is because move tool is a starting point and line tool would be the next connecting item. There we are. And as you can see here, this is a bit of tricky because the item or the uh, point is starting to change. So maybe it makes more sense to have this before. Save that, refresh, there we are. Now you can see the data set will be drawn after we draw this line here. So of course we're not done because what I want to do now is have some text here and start to work with the text. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to say here, uh, constant angle because I'm going to work with rotations. So I'm going to say math.pi slash 180 or divide by 180. And the reason why, because the pi is one pi equals a half circle, two pi is a full circle. So half circle is 180 degrees. There we are. And now all I want to do is to get the single degree angle. So we can control this later on easily. So now what I want to do is I want to create some text. Let's create some text. So because it's ctx dot font. And this here gives us the font type, style, and boldness. So let's say we want bold. I want to have 12 pixels. And finally, I'm going to use the font family of sans serif. That looks nice. Next, what I want to do here is to give it the color. So I'm going to ctx dot fill style. And why fill style? Because it will fill up the entire shape of the letters. Basically, it's just a shape or a line shape in a form of a letter. That's basically what it does. So I'm going to say fill style and let's make this black. Just straightforward black. And then what I want to do is I want to start drawing the item. So I'm going to say ctx that fill text and fill text here. First of all, is the text that I want. Let's, let's say the text. We have the X and then the Y coordinates. What I want to do is I want to put it between here. So it's in the center. So how do we do this? Well, we need to have this height here because we can calculate the height from this point to that. And what I need to do that is for this height. Divide by two would be whatever is in here, but the height will exclude this top area, which is the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the height first divided by two. And once that is done, then we include the top area. There we are. Next here, the position here, very straightforward. We're going to put it in here. That's the same index number. Save, refresh. All right, so now we have our text, but I feel our text is still not really correct because we need to center it and then after we need to rotate it. So what I'm going to do here, enter, I'm going to say ctx dot um, text align equals center. So I'm going to put, it, put the alignment on the center. There we are. And now we can rotate this and probably because we have 12 pixels here, the line width is not allowed to be 12 pixels, should be 12 or more. So it will fit nicely between there. I make it 15 pixels. Now the rotation. To do the rotation, this is very important. We're going to go here. We're going to enter ctx.translate. And what this really does is basically it converts the specific text area, only that area, and then will be starting to be rotated. So what I'm going to do here is a translate. Our coordinates here, I'm going to cut this out, put it in there, semicolon, and then I'll just say here zero comma zero. Save this, refresh. Well, as you can see here, we have now a rotating effect. So what I need to do here is to check what's going on, or at least to stop the rotation. So this is very important. Um, and I can see here there's two things I need to do. First of all, we're going to say here. I'm going to say ctx.save. This will stop a rotation. Or I expected it, but no, because I need to do as well a ctx.restore. And that needs to be, of course, in small letters. So we say ctx.restore, save, refresh. All right, so as you can see here now, it all works and works all nicely. However, what I truly did here with the translate I said to create like a, you can imagine like a piece of paper on top of a 
existing paper, but that piece of paper is separate from everything else. So we can rotate now. And the only thing I want to rotate is this item, but nothing else. So that's what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do here, enter, how many pixels do we need to rotate or how many degrees? 90 degrees. And remember, we have the angle here. We calculate the degree. So all we have to do here now is ctx dot rotate and then indicate our rotation. Let's say 90 degrees multiplied by the angle to make sure we have that. Or else you have to divide this by a half pi or something like that. That would be far too complicated. So this makes it 90 degrees. Save this. Refresh. There you are. If you're not satisfied with this rotation, maybe you want to have it all the way around. No problem as well. All we have to do here now is to say rotation would be instead of 90, it should have maybe uh, 270. So I say 270 degrees. Put in here 270. Save. Refresh. And now it rotates in the exact opposite order. Beautiful. And that's basically it. So, of course, let's do some more advanced item because this here could be more advanced by creating our own custom plugin structure. So what I'm going to do here, comma, and then what I'm going to say here, plugins. And in this plugins object, we're going to put in the text. So what I'm going to grab is here the ID. And this is the reason why we have the ID here. And also the reason why we're going to use this plugins option here or object here. So I'm going to put it in there, colon. And then you can see here we had like a few items that we want to control. We have here the color of our line. So let's call this our border color. And we have here the line width. So let's make the border color first. So I'm going to say here, border color. And let's make this light, or well, not even light gray. Let's make this uh, aqua. I'm just going to grab a unique color. So you will see instantly that it works. So then here, all I will say is get the plugins. And this plugins here will understand instantly the the line marker text ID. And then we are going to get here the border color. Once we have the border color, put that in there, save, refresh. And now you can see here, we get the aqua color, beautiful. Now what I want to do is let's do uh, the thickness and of course the text. So what I'm going to do here, comma, I'm going to say here, border width. And the border width will be three pixels. Once you have the three pixels here, border width, three pixels. Uh, or 15 pixels, that should be it. So let's put this on 15 pixels. And of course here, we're going to have the connected value border width. Save, refresh, and you can see here, it just maintains the same position, but now we have a reference. Uh, final item here is probably here, the fill color for the text, text color, and whatever the text should be. So I'm going to say here, enter, I'm going to say here, text whatever the text will be, let's say hello text and comma, we're going to say here, uh, just a color. I'll use the term color and this will be black, but that will be our text color. So now I can say here, plugins dot text, if I'm not mistaken, yes. And then here, plugins dot color, save this, refresh. Hello text, that works nicely. If you want to control this here or bold, let's do that as well. So we have everything. So I'm going to say here, bold. Um, it's either normal or bold yeah, or font weight, I guess. Font weight, that's probably a nicer term. I'm going to put that in here. Like here, you can see here, this is slightly more tricky, but don't worry. What we're going to do is we're going to say here, Going to put a back tick and here as well back tick so we have template literals and i'm going to say here dollar sign curly braces to put in the value as bold and then of course we could even do the same here with the font uh, pixels or the pixels of the font size and so let's say here font size and then i'm just going to put it in here as well let's say color here comma font size and to make sure you see that it works i'll make it 20. so if i save this Refresh, oh, all right, interesting. We get a mistake in here. The font size and the font weight. Let's see what is our mistake. Font weight is not defined. Font weight, copy, go down here. Save, hold on. 
All right, my bad. I'm just getting ahead of myself. As you can see here, font weight and font size. Of course, they are a mistake. And the reason why they're a mistake is, of course, we need to have the plugins or else it doesn't know where that reference is coming from. Plugins dot and plugins dot font size and font weight. There we are. And you can see here they're big. But of course, you can see because it's be behind this data set here. So it doesn't overlap or it overlaps or the data set is on top overlapping the text here. So that is basically it. Let's convert this into only 12 pixels, save, refresh. And there we are. Now we have our marker with our text in here. 